Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Find Your Model Health podcast, the podcast for those looking to optimize their long-term health and weight goals and understand how their body really works. I am your host. I am Shemaine Looney. I am a fitness and nutrition expert, biohacker, and certified iridologist. And I'm very happy to have you back with me today. This is podcast episode 194 or podcast episode number three in our podcast week. This is the week that I'm trying to pump out as many podcast episodes as I can to cover all the topics that I get asked to cover. So I know this episode is going to be super popular because it's a hot topic. Um, We're going to look at GABA, which is a very popular supplement with my clients and even myself. But before I go on, I must emphasize that the information in these podcast episodes is for informational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice. Please consult your healthcare practitioner before making any lifestyle changes. Okay, if you're a client of mine or you're one of my followers, you'll know that I am one of GABA's biggest fans. So GABA is short or is an acronym for Gamma Amino Bitteric Acid. And GABA is our relaxation neurotransmitters. And it's really one of my favorite supplements because it's so effective and it's generally safe for most people. We're going to go through a lot more now though. So GABA or Gamma Amino Butyric Acid, it's a naturally occurring amino acid or neurotransmitter that works um, in your brain. So neurotransmitters function as chemical messengers and GABA is considered an inhibitory neurotransmitter because it blocks or it inhibits certain brain signals and decreases activity in your central nervous system. So one of those brain signals is anxiety or we can call it adrenaline, whichever you want. Um, And that's generally what I use GABA a lot for is to help with anxiety. Now when GABA attaches to a protein In your brain, known as the GABA receptor, it produces that calming, relaxation effect. And I'll say to many people, GABA pretty much puts up a wall. It blocks anxiety from going any further. So this can also help with stress, of course. Anxiety and stress and adrenaline, they all go hand in hand. And even adrenaline and fear. So it can help with fear as well. I think they're all very similar. Although we give them different different names, we perceive them or we feel them. Um, Now, there is also research to say that GABA can help prevent seizures, but we're going to look at that a little bit more as we go on because there's other instances that say in people with epilepsy that GABA may encourage more epileptic episodes. Um, So anyway, as a result of how GABA works or its properties, GABA has become a really popular supplement over the last few years, especially for health professionals, quote, in the know. And I like to think of myself as being in the know. Um, And I've been recommending GABA for years. If you go back in my biohacking library group and search GABA, you will see I have posts back years, 2016, 2017, recommending GABA for my clients. Um, And this is partly because many people can become deficient in GABA or it doesn't work properly in them or because our demand, our lifestyle demands are higher now and our GABA just doesn't, its its production is not adequate enough. We don't have enough GABA to offset the amount of stress or anxiety we feel nowadays. And also because GABA is not available in many food sources, like really the only foods that contain GABA are fermented ones like kimchi and miso and 
potentially sauerkraut so depending on how the sauerkraut is made so um, unless you're eating a lot of them you're not going to get those kind of inhibitory effects that we want um, and GABA's effects as I say it works like gangbusters it works really well it works really fast so GABA's natural calming effect on the brain um, has led to countless claims about the use of GABA for stress or to reduce stress or anxiety or all those feelings of maybe overwhelm over the years. And so GABA can be used in many ways and I'm going to get to them now. I'm trying not to confuse you too much. So as we know, when anxiety and stress and those butterflies in your stomach are all present, Generally, we know that there is excess adrenaline present and we know that adrenaline dominance is a big problem nowadays. Um, so adrenaline is that thing that's going to give you the diarrhea. It's going to give you the nausea, the upset stomach. It's going to make you jittery. It's going to give you the butterflies in your stomach. Adrenaline is also connected to nausea. Um, not just in the average person, but also during pregnancy. If you have constant nausea during pregnancy, that is that adrenaline response happening. Um, and if you follow Dr. Michael Platt, then you'll know he talks a lot about adrenaline dominance and the symptoms or the, the, excuse me, so the, the, not just the symptoms, but the different health issues we'll see correlated to having too much adrenaline, like fibromyalgia, like that sleeplessness, that insomnia, even migraines, pains, all that stuff like that. So adrenaline really is the underlying problem here. So if we look at, okay, well, we know adrenaline is going to cause all of that, including our anxiety or our panic disorder or mood issues like depression, then GABA may just be that supplement that works really well to help people. Um, so while this all makes sense in theory. There's only been a certain amount of research or evidence to suggest that GABA works for all of these, but I can honestly say in my experience and in my practice over the 15 years, I have seen that GABA has been a benefit for nearly all of my clients that I recommended it to. Actually, I would say all, not even nearly, because if someone's not feeling the benefits of GABA, it's generally because they need more of it. They need a higher dose. Um, so GABA, another thing, so, okay. So GABA can be used for anxiety. According to a 2006 article, two small studies found that participants who took a GABA supplement had increased feelings of relaxation during a stressful event than those who took a placebo or even L-theanine, which is another popular amino acid supplement. Um, then there was another study for high blood pressure in 2003 that showed daily consumption of a fermented milk that contained GABA reduced blood pressure in people with slightly elevated pressure after two to four weeks and this was compared with a placebo and I would assume that this is because GABA has that relaxation aspect which can directly impact inflammation as well and inflammation is a big problem when we look at blood pressure. There was another study that found that taking GABA containing chlorella twice a day reduced blood pressure in those with borderline hypertension. Again chlorella is a strong anti-inflammatory, chlorella is a chelator, chlorella can help with photo photosynthesis so combine that with GABA we've got a lot of antioxidation going on there and reduction of the inflammatory cytokines that may be floating around in the body or in the blood because I've spoke about this before in my inflammaging podcast episode that your blood actually can become inflamed and this is one of the contributors to people aging faster. Now when we look at using GABA for insomnia it works really well. 
So, in a small study, a 2018 study, participants who took 300 milligrams of GABA an hour before going to bed fell asleep faster than those taking a placebo. They also reported improved sleep quality four weeks after starting treatment. Um, now, they only used 30 milligrams in that study. And generally, I have seen efficacy or effectiveness from 700 milligrams upwards. That could be for multiple reasons that the clients I'm dealing with now have their stress and anxiety is a lot more severe than maybe those study participants was. So I'm finding that in order for GABA to be effective and be effective fast, like fast means it takes effect in about 10 minutes or less, I'm looking at 700 milligrams or more and generally what I'll do to support GABA or sorry to support insomnia if all my other tips and tricks haven't worked and I know like what we're doing so far with the client in their evening routine is working well but maybe we need just that extra push because her or his anxiety or stress is just stopping them from getting over that kind of finish line in regards to proper good quality sleep what I'll do then is I'll have them add in a GABA before um, before bed so in their evening routine usually about 20-15 minutes before bed and that will work really fast and that will be that um, thing to get them over the finish line and get them into good quality restorative sleep then if I see that a client is waking up in the morning, and this brings us into our stress and fatigue part of how GABA works, if I see a client wakes up with a lot of anxiety or stress in the morning, and maybe they're just getting the butterflies in the stomach, or they have that feeling of dread and doom, and you know that overall feeling of anxiety, maybe they have that, or maybe they're just constantly nauseous in the morning and they can't keep anything down, or maybe whatever they do consume in the morning, it just runs through them. That brings us back to that adrenaline response, and that's where I'll use GABA first thing in the morning and in many people GABA has a great half-life it can last up to 12 hours which means if you take GABA in the morning it can support you all day then and you may not need to take another one until bedtime to help with you sleep or if there's a very stressful event so GABA is amazing for that so um if I see a client complain about anxiety or nausea or maybe diarrhea first thing in the morning, then I'm going to maybe add in GABA as soon as they wake up. So there was a 2011 study in Japan which examined the effects of a beverage containing either 25 milligrams or 50 milligrams of GABA on 30 participants. Both beverages were linked to reduced measures of mental and physical fatigue because we know anxiety and stress and adrenaline can be quite draining and it can leave us flustered and create a lot of brain fog. So they saw reduced measures of mental and physical fatigue while doing a problem solving task. But the beverage containing 50 milligrams appeared to be slightly more effective. So remember I said that these higher doses seem to be more effective. There was another study in 2009 that found that eating chocolate containing 28 milligrams of GABA reduced stress in participants performing a problem solving task. Um, and then another study found that taking capsules containing 100 milligrams of GABA reduced measures of stress in people completing an experimental mental task. So like the research is there. There's not mountains of them, but we also have our testimonies from people that have used it or my clients or followers. It is effective. It does work. Um, generally, I like to see the higher doses. If I'm recommending GABA to a client or a follower, I'm looking for capsules that are either 500 milligrams or 700 milligrams or more and then we'll go from there so we might then start them with a lower dose and we'll titrate up as I see they need it and then of course timing will depend on the individual symptoms or their needs and what are the side effects of GABA there's generally not many side effects of GABA. Um, there are some reported side effects that include an upset stomach, headache, 
sleepiness, muscle weakness. The upset stomach and the headache generally is because the body is not used to that much um, relaxation happening in the body. Kind of like what I mentioned with dopamine yesterday, is that when the body is not used to these certain hormones or feelings, it can take a while to adapt. So we start with a lower dose and then we increase as the body adapts. And then with sleepiness, um, of course, that's going to be the calming effect of the GABA as well. Um, so since GABA can make some people sleepy, it's advised that you don't drive or operate machinery after taking GABA until you know how it affects you. But this is quite an uncommon side effect. I don't hear of it. I don't think I've ever heard of it. Um, and then there is the potential and this hasn't been confirmed i mean there's a possibility that gaba or gamma amino euteric acid can cause issues in people that have epilepsy so there was a study done in pubmed so the title of the study is gaba and epilepsy their complex relationship and the evolution of our understanding that says there is a chance that GABA can intensify seizures in some rodent and human cases. Absence and other generalized seizures in humans often worsened when treated with GABA transaminase inhibitors. Um, so that really, in my opinion, that is a a case of hit and miss, and this is not to be negligible because um, the study also goes on to say that surprisingly the GABA transaminase inhibitors appear to be more useful in partial than in generalized epilepsy. So I, it really is hit and miss. Like I said at the beginning of this podcast episode, we see that there are cases where GABA can be very helpful for people um, helping to prevent seizures, especially if your seizures are more brought on by stress and anxiety and inflammation. Um, so the GABA deficiency theory of epilepsy is not as convincing as we would like it to be. Like there isn't a straight answer there. Um, so it could be that ga for those that have um, a specific gene, a candidate gene for epilepsy, that the GABA may not be a great idea. But it really is a case of, I think, try it in a small dose, see how you feel, and then go from there. Um, so there are arguments that some seizures um, get inhibited and some don't. So whether or not gabinergic or not, they may have an effect on seizures so um, that's that's one caveat, and I think that's the most serious potential side effect. Otherwise, if you look, you're not going to see many other side effects listed for GABA. It's pretty safe. It's pretty effective. Um, and even there are other research studies that say that GABA is very important. Um, and can prevent the seizures, like I said, but that doesn't mean that you don't want to be careful with it. So the bottom line is that GABA has a very important role in our bodies and even in our survival nowadays. I mean, that's quite bold of me to say, but I think GABA is going to be a big player in us surviving. Um, when used as a supplement, we want to be careful. We want to try it at a lower dose, work with a health profession, professional, and then work our way up. Um, we know that there are studies that support its benefits, and there's one or two that say there might be a slight risk. Um, but otherwise, you can get GABA supplements pretty easy in a health food store. It's not going to be something that you'll get in a grocery store, or you can buy online. 
if you have a question about the brands that I recommend, uh, of course, brands are very, very important when it comes to buying supplements and then bioavailability, the efficacy of the company, the integrity. Um, I'm a big fan of Now Foods and I don't get paid for giving this shout out to them, but I like Now Foods and they do an awesome GABA supplement. It's a 750 milligram supplement. I really like that and I believe another brand brand is Genestra and they do a 700 milligram capsule so they're pretty good as well Genestra is a good brand so as always um, I think I've answered everything in this episode I think that was a good coverage although I am biased of course I'm going to say I did a good job but if you have any questions please do reach out to me and I'd be happy to clarify and answer uh, you can reach out to me through my website, which is shemainsmodelhealth.com. But I must add, one thing I've noticed lately is every time someone emails me through my website, they're going directly into my junk mail. So I may not even remember to check my junk mail because I won't get a notification like if you get an email into your inbox. So if I'm a few days late responding there, um, please excuse me. It's because that's happening and I have to figure out how to fix it. Otherwise, you can do what another girl did yesterday she sent me an email it went into my junk mail but she reached out to me on my Facebook page which is Shemaine's Model Health and she said hey I sent you an email I'm just checking to see if you got it blah 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 and then I knew to go look for it um, or you can reach out to me on Instagram under Shemaine's Model Health doc, um, as well I was going to say dot com other people who are more familiar with Instagram also message me there too Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you have a really great day um, and I hope you're enjoying this podcast week. So far, the topics I think have been quite good and helpful to many. Okay, have a great day and I'll chat to you guys soon. Bye-bye.